The air we breathe is precious and necessary for life to exist on this planet. And we all share the air in the community. Automobiles, industry, agriculture, and many other necessities for modern life have an impact on air quality. The emissions from petroleum-based fuels that propel our modern world can leave the air filled with toxins and other pollutants. In response, stakeholders have joined together to reduce air pollution and improve the quality of what we breathe every day. The Utah Clean Cities Coalition is one of nearly 100 coalitions that are part of the U.S. Department of Energy's Clean Cities Initiative, working to reduce our dependence on foreign oil, develop regional economic opportunities, and improve air quality. The environmental impact of petroleum, particularly from cars and fleet vehicles, is a large contributor to Utah's poor air quality, which often leads this state to be ranked number one in worst air quality nationally during certain parts of the year. Through their stakeholder partnerships and the grants they've been awarding for over 19 years, the coalition serves as a resource to promote alternative fuels, infrastructure, advanced technology vehicles, and fuel economy clean strategies with many innovative programs. In 1994, the coalition was inspired to take action for improving Utah's air quality. The mayor of Salt Lake City joined 40 other stakeholders and created the 16th U.S. Clean Cities Program. Coalitions are how we get things done the best. It's how we get private sector, public sector, people from various perspectives to figure out what's going to work best. And with the mission of Utah Clean Cities for us to move to alternative fuels, for us to make improvements in air quality, uh, they have done a wonderful job of merging all of us who are pursuing a common interest and, and giving us the best results. One of the most innovative and recognized programs the coalition launched is Idle Free Awareness Month. The program educates drivers regarding their impact to air quality. As drivers become more educated, they better understand that idling is a waste of fuel which not only wastes money, but it has detrimental impacts to our air quality. Idling is a serious air quality issue. In fact, if each car in the United States were to reduce idling by only six minutes per day, three billion gallons of fuel would be saved each year, amounting to nearly $10 billion in savings to our economy. Consider this strategy as a low-hanging fruit. Utah Clean Cities established a challenge for the communities across Utah in 2008. We're a team that likes to win and meet those challenges, so we established an idle-free program within our organization. Like many large fleet owners, Kennecott found that taking a few simple steps can have dramatic reduction in idling and costs. Not idling is a good business decision. Today we have 500 vehicles in our idle free program. We've saved millions of dollars in fuel savings, millions of dollars in maintenance costs, and more importantly, we've saved 26,500 tons of emissions from the reductions of those cars running due to our idle free program. Drivers who know they are going to idle for more than 10 seconds can save more gas by turning the engine off and restarting it than leaving the car on. Using the slogan, Turn your key, be idle free. Drivers have been encouraged to avoid idling in common loading zones. One common loading zone found all over Utah is when we wait in line to pick up kids at school. The program also reminds winter drivers are to limit engine warm up time to 30 seconds and encourages summer drivers to limit idling to keep the air conditioner running. Other successful strategies include avoiding drive through lanes and walking inside to order fast food or make a bank deposit. Reducing all this idling has some impressive results. For example, a specific outreach effort training school bus drivers to limit idling, on average, reduced their idling by 21 minutes a day. This saved 92,000 gallons of diesel fuel and saved 42 school districts $300,000 a year collectively. The Utah Idle Awareness Month, I think, has been highly successful because we now have over 300 of our schools involved in that program. And that includes uh, tens of thousands of students uh, across Utah that are directly involved in that. Utah is particularly threatened by air pollution because when summer air is hot and still, vehicle pollutants become trapped in the valley air in increasingly high concentrations. Over 50% of Utah's air pollution comes from motor vehicles, so driving cars less is essential to improving our air quality. 
The Clear the Air Challenge is another successful partnership Utah Clean Cities has been involved with. The Clear the Air Challenge is where drivers logged how many trips and miles of driving they saved each week. The first year's goal was to eliminate 300,000 trips and save 2 million miles and reduce 1.7 million pounds of emissions from the air. The goal was accomplished and in the third year of the program, UCCC was instrumental in taking the program statewide. Another successful program made possible with funds from the UCCC's $14.9 million American Reinvestment and Recovery Act grant is the Clean Bus Program. The Clean Bus Program helped fund the replacement of older school buses with alternative or hybrid buses to transport the students. Utah Clean Cities has been a great partner for us. They have provided us with, with matching grants that have allowed us to invest money into compressed natural gas school buses and they have made it affordable for us to um, introduce this technology into our fleet. The coalition is constantly offering education and awareness programs to help fleet managers understand the benefits of switching emissions-heavy diesel fleets to cleaner running alternatives. There's an abundant source of natural gas in this country. The American Gas Association projects over a hundred year supply of natural gas. Secondly, it is an American fuel. Almost all of the natural gas that we use in this country is produced in this country, which is an alternative to foreign oil supplies. Thirdly, it's an affordable fuel. You can buy an equivalent natural gas gallon for about 40% of what diesel or gasoline currently sells out at the pumps. One important stakeholder, Utah State University, one of UCCC's 34 ARRA grant partners, switched its campus shuttle fleet to compressed natural gas several years ago and has received grants from the American Reinvestment and Recovery Act. With Utah State University, the CNG program affects us threefold. First, financially, because of the fact that pri the price of fuel in comparison to other types of fuel currently to operate a bus is about half. That impacts my budget tremendously. Secondly, operating with clean cities and other programs, we are able to offset the cost of new purchases. Thirdly, we feel that the Haggy shuttle system using compressed natural gas can do our small share in, in providing our sustainability commitment to the greater Cache Valley area. The Utah Clean Cities Coalition also encourages simple, small steps that can become part of the larger solution encouraging all alternative eco-strategies. It encourages biking, carpooling, and taking the bus as easy ways to help eliminate vehicle emissions. Between the vehicles we drive, our driving habits, and even the natural geography of the area we live in, air pollution can be a serious health issue now and an even more critical one for our children. Every day, the Utah Clean Cities Coalition works to change the habits of our community's drivers and improve our fuel choice. If we can eliminate a few seconds of idling or omit one trip, we will all breathe a little easier and enjoy cleaner air. For more information about the Utah Clean Cities Coalition, log on to utahcleancities.org.